Okay folks, I'm going to attempt to do a from tray to plate video, so the entire stretching, topping and cooking process in real time. The only thing that will cut is from getting here to my oven. So I've got this dough, um, I just made the cellar on today actually, it's 62% um, hydration using just uh, dried yeast, Allison's Easy Bake Dried Yeast. And it's been proofing for around about seven hours, I think, uh, at room temperature. So if you do have a tray in a lid and you're not going to use these dough balls anytime soon, always cover them back up again, otherwise the top layer will develop a crust. And it's really hard to work with. It can be done, but I certainly wouldn't recommend it. So that's the dough. Uh, same process as in my video on how to stretch it. I'll start in the middle. Press all the air out to the outer crust, make a corner cone, corner chone. Still don't know how to pronounce that one. But yeah, if you don't know, the crust on a pizza is called, well, it's either a corner cone or a corner chone. I'm just not sure how to pronounce it. <coughs> so, stretching the dough. The higher uh, percentage hydration you make your dough, the more fragile the dough is to work with. This is only 62. The 62% water, 3% salt, and um, the rest of it flour and water. In Neapolitan pizza, there is no sugar or oil in the dough. If there was any sugar in the dough, it would just burn at the temperature uh, that these pizzas cook in. So I just use like a gravity method to stretch it, just like this. And also, if I was to leave that ball there, or the pizza base, uh, just for five minutes, the whole uh, piece of dough relaxes. It would be easier to stretch yet again. So I'll just go around once more. There we go. This was originally a 250 gram uh, dough ball, and that makes around about a 12 inch piece. And there's my hands for reference, and I've got fairly big hands. So that's the dough stretched. Now we have the toppings. So I'm just going to make a classic margarita. And after it's cooked, I'll add uh, some fresh rocket and parmesan. And that is a winning combination. Parmesan and rocket on top of a freshly cooked pizza. Ah, it's one of my favorites. Now we don't want to overload the uh, pizza base. Never want to overload the pizza base. Next is we just get some Grana Padano, this is just uh, Tesco stuff, really nothing too fancy. Add some of that. Fior de Latte. Again, always keeping on the topic of not overloading the pizza base too much. No, don't add uh, too much more cheese. To be honest, we'll do one more about there. Yeah, that looks good. And add some fresh basil. I love basil. Uh, I love it. It just tastes so fresh. Here's the basil. And last but not least, some extra virgin olive oil in a nice big circle right to the middle. Getting the pizza to the peel is Fairly easy if you're confident about it, just add a light dusting onto the peel. You really don't need that much. And it's a simple case of being confident, just pulling it right onto it. You might get some of the cheese moved, but this is the point where you can re-stretch it and just fix the toppings. So, that's the pizza, ready to launch. And it should be, yeah, nice and loose on the peel, ready to go. Time for the cook. This has been on high heat since the last time I made a pizza, which was probably uh, 10 minutes ago. So the center of the stone, there we have it, 429 degrees. That's about as hot, really, as I wanted to go. I'll turn the flame down to uh, around about the seven o'clock position on the dial and get the pizza ready for launch. It's gonna go right in, and after about 30 seconds, I'll give it its first turn. So there we go, 10 to, at 20 past on the second time, 
I'll go in and give it its first little turn. And once I've done that with a big peel, I'll start using uh, my little eight inch uh, turning peel. I think the trick that I am happy with, instead of cooking it initially on full flame, uh, just at the start cooking on a lower flame saves the potential of burning it and wrecking it right from the get-go. So, so that's it just after 30 seconds. Now that the base has got some sort of cooked sort of side to it, I'll turn the flame up. There we go. And from here on, I'll be using the little turning peel to do all of the work. So go in at an angle with this, lift the whole pizza up and turn it around that way. In at an angle, lift the whole pizza up, turn it around. So that flame, that's probably back at full flame now to be honest. In at an angle, turn. It is a little bit tricky with the small size of the oven, um, but that's a compromise really in uh, these restaurants. You've got massive wood-fired ovens, you've got plenty of room to turn a pizza. I'm just working with what I've got really, and making it work. You can also, uh, just at the front of the pizza, insert and lift up the base so you can see how well it's cooking. If it's cooking too much, just pick up the whole pizza and uh, you can hold it to the back or hold it to the top but the rest of it cook across the base stops cooking and that is the finished margarita now just before I put this on a plate to serve I'll add some fresh rocket around the top of the pizza and again one final sprinkle of some grana padano and that is one of the nicest pizza combinations there is